still, um, we're just going to go back a little bit to uh, and discuss uh, perhaps on the uh, uh, fishing industry. We've been hearing a lot about the lower fuel prices, higher catches, lower raw material prices, and so on. In your opinion, how much uh, do you think the industry has been affected by the fuel prices uh, in, in short term and long term? Uh, what, uh, what is your opinion on this? Well, um, you know, if ever there was a time when the global economy needed low priced fuel, it's now, right? I, I, yeah. you know, it's unfortunate for oil producers, but uh, for everybody else, I think, um, frankly, they need it. Um, now, at the start of the year, uh, the transport sector, the marine transport sector, which is an important part of our tuna supply chain, um, was burdened by the new IMO uh, low sulfur fuel oil regulation that came into effect on January 1st. And fuel oil, oil prices rose very uh, significantly, partly due to uh, the more highly refined nature of that low sulfur product, um, but also due to, frankly, poor availability. There were lots of ports that simply didn't have it. Um, so we started the year with low sulfur fuel oil at $635 uh, a ton, which was itself three, more than $300 a ton more than the equivalent non-low sulfur products just a month earlier. Um, so, uh, you know, by the end of May, uh, that low sulfur oil price had dropped to something like $250. Um, an NGO, gas oil, which had been, which is the main fuel for fishing vessels, uh, which had been at $620 in January, had dropped to $257. So they're very significant savings for, uh, for both, you know, the, the, the marine transport sector and for fishing vessels. Uh, however, in the meantime, uh, the Bangkok uh, benchmark skipjack price, uh, which was $1,500 in March, uh, is only $1,200 today. So, you know, that $300 drop in price has not only cancelled out any fuel savings made by fishing vessels, but it's taken a whole lot more besides. So, you know, in summary, you know, low fuel prices are really very welcome, but lower fish prices are definitely not. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just thinking, what do you think is a factor that is contributing uh, more to keeping the prices lower uh, to no, raw material? Is it the fuel prices or higher catches or lower demand? Well, I think in the end, it's always a matter of supply and demand. I mean, if uh, a, a terrible disaster happened and took out half the world's fish catching capacity overnight, um, the price of tuna would definitely go up dramatically. And the fact is that over the years, uh, more and more vessels, particularly per seine vessels, but also longliners, have come into this industry. Um, catches have, have been generally moving upwards. Uh, at the same time, uh, consumption in some major markets like the US has been um, static or even declining. Uh, there's been a, uh, a tendency to actually put less tuna in the can um, by A, reducing can sizes, and B, uh, using um, you know, vegetable broth uh, and other you know, items. So uh, we need far less tuna today to produce a so-called standard case than we did 20 years ago. But at the same time, uh, although some markets have increased or have grown, others have declined, and... Um, there are a lot, there's a lot more catch than there was. So that's the, the, the crux of the problem, right? It's, it's uh, you know, and that was there long before COVID uh, ever hove up on our horizon, right? So this is what's driving the price of tuna. And, and because uh, tuna is uh, now relatively abundant, uh, that enables um, the large scale buyers of the finished goods to, um, Play the market uh, to their advantage, and uh, you know that's just a, a normal uh, uh, market economics thing, I think. Uh, thanks, Will. Just just to add on, uh, what do you think are some of the um, challenges tuna fishers uh, are dealing with in terms of uh, fishing disruptions and 
to some extent market uncertainty. Well, they, they, they face huge challenges. You know, many of them can't uh, even disembark their vessels to, to go home for leave, um, either because the port authorities won't allow them to, or because there are simply no flights to take them home anyway. Um, so they're stuck on the boats. You know, technicians uh, can't join boats to uh, undertake uh, important maintenance and repairs. The managers responsible who normally visit their boats uh, haven't been able to. Uh, a lot of fishing time has been lost due to various port regulations and, and outright closures of ports. But in spite of all these problems, the boats have continued, largely speaking, to fish, you know, albeit with uh, you know, a significant loss of time. Uh, it's really a tribute to the, uh, to the tenacity of the crews and the ingenuity of the, of the vessel managers. Um, but what we should really note here is that this state of affairs can't drag on indefinitely. You know, eventually, crew have to go home and have their R&R. Their, their &R. Uh, maintenance has to be done. Uh, supplies have to be delivered. Uh, and the longer the present situation drags on, the more operational problems the boats will see. And that will reflect in, in uh, fishing effort you know, and, and, and catches.